Matt Murphy here with Dave Cohn, talking about some of the 3D improvements and enhancements. You know, one of my favorite things to make a 3D object was always press-pull, because you could just take a 2D object, you could pull it, you could press it, you could make a 3D solid or a void very easily. Are there improvements to that? Yeah, that's another area where Autodesk has really improved things in 2013. Now you can not only take curves and extrude curves very quickly to create 3D objects, but you can grab onto a face and pull the face, and you can grab onto multiple objects and use press pull on multiple objects at the same time. Still sounds like one of my favorite tools, it's, except improved. It's really cool. Let me show you. The press pull tool provides one of the most powerful ways to create and modify 3D objects. This enables you to dynamically modify objects by pressing and pulling to create extrusions and offsets. The easiest way to start the command is to click the press pull tool, which you'll find in the modeling panel of the home ribbon and in the solid panel of the solid ribbon. When you start the command in this way, AutoCAD prompts you to select an object or a bounded area. If I want to press or pull this circle, I can either click inside the circle or click on the circle. If I enter an extrusion height or simply pull out from the cube and then click to specify the height, the circle is extruded out from the face of the cube. If I select the circle, the program again prompts me to specify the extrusion height. But this time, notice that once I specify the height, the circle is extruded into a cylinder, but because I selected the circle instead of the bounded area, this time the resulting cylinder is not added to the solid cube. The prompt repeats again. If I click inside this circle to select it as a boundary, and then instead of pulling the cylinder away from the cube, I press it through the cube, once I specify the extrusion height, notice that the cylinder is immediately subtracted from the cube, resulting in a hole through the cube. And notice that the command is still active. I'll pan over and click to select this rectangle. Because the rectangle was a closed object, the rectangle is extruded to create a solid box. But if I click to select this arc, the resulting object is a surface because the object I extruded was an open object. If I click on the top of the cube, notice that I can pull to extrude the cube. If I click on the face of the cube again, I can also push to shorten the cube. Notice if I click to select the top face of the pyramid, that when I pull to specify the extrusion height, the face extrudes without affecting the adjacent faces. But if I press the control key and then click to select the top face, the face is offset as it extrudes to follow the taper angle of the adjacent sides. Notice that after I select the object or bounded area, but before I specify the extrusion height, I can choose the multiple option. I'll click inside this rectangle, and I'll click inside the next rectangle and I'll click inside the rectangle on the other side of the box as well. Once I'm done selecting bounded areas, I can press Enter or right-click. Notice that as soon as I specify the extrusion height, all of the bounded areas are pulled out from the solid box and are added to the solid. Typically, when you're finished using the Press Pull command, you must press the Escape key, Enter key, or Space bar to end the command but after using the multiple option, the command ends. You can also start the press pull tool by simply holding down the control, shift, and E keys on your keyboard simultaneously. Then, move the cursor over the bounded area you want to extrude, such as the circle. If you then click, the press pull tool is immediately activated. You can let go of the keyboard keys at this point. Again, the resulting cylinder is added to the solid box.